Welcome back to Burgundy Drip Gold Trim. If you're here for the first time, please make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Definitely make sure after you subscribe, you hit the notification bell. Now let's get right into this video. Back with a drip that hits and a trim that fits so eloquently well. It's your boy, Mr. Royal Black. Eloquent razor, hell of a flavor. We'll get into it, give you my thoughts and a little bit of a preview of our matchup against the New York Giants. Our Washington Commanders head up to MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey to face the New York Giants. And boy, 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 I tell you, I have nothing but vengeance on my mind. And this is personal. I'm going to get to that in a minute, why this is personal for a number of reasons. And this right here. We always play that vintage, old school, 1990s NFC East matchup type ball when we play this team. Like this game, you kind of always, you kind of want to say it could go either way, but the way the Giants have just been getting us these last few years, I, I really don't like it because the Giants haven't been a good team these last few years. And the last few years, we haven't been great either, but far as like the roster, what's on paper and the product that's on field what we've seen from it we are a better team if we if you want to say it like that but the whole thing is at the end of the day what it matters what goes into that win or loss column and they have been beating us and like daniel jones is six one and one i believe or five one and one it's either one or two either way we've only beaten him one time since he's been in that that blue uniform and i really wanted to see daniel jones tomorrow but apparently he's not going to be out there and this makes me even be more like now, like, oh, okay. We seen what Tyrod Taylor could do in Buffalo. They almost pulled off that win in Buffalo last week. The offense looked much more competent with him as a quarterback. It was a couple of brain farts and Tyrod Taylor didn't get up to the line in enough time. And you see how, like, even in their game, because we did something similar to that in our games, where you just have to take the points. You have to, um, I mean, in that case, they should have took a timeout or uh, you know, threw the ball down, you know, spike the ball, you know, so they can kick the field goal. You have to take all these possession in these points when you can, because you don't never know when you're going to get another opportunity. And they were crying at the end of the game on passing the furnace. Look, man, us Burgundy and Gold fans, we ain't trying to hit that. We ain't trying to hit none of that. Y'all know what happened last year up in FedEx Field where the, um, the Giants DB was dancing with Curtis Samuel, then didn't even the play before that, where um, Terry looked at the side judge and asked him, was he okay to be at the line? And the side judge says, yes. Soon as the ball is snapped, they call the flag. And like, that, sh that shit right there already looked at suspect. And then coming to find out that the whole, the, the, officiating, the officiating crew is from East Rutherford, New Jersey, and which will be the same officiating crew for this game. Now, if you listen to my last few videos, I've said I don't even want to even like lay on the excuse of oh the refs beat us the refs beat us but as you see from what last year and those two players right there I mean that looked kind of fishy and it kind of makes you wonder can like these um, officials can they can they play the parlay I don't know how that goes but I know like players can't play but I don't know the stipulations around these referees in that regards but that I don't want to lay and put anything on it but we, we taking that personal that's one thing another reason we need to take this game personal rookie cornerback Deontay Banks and I know a few guys here they were big on drafting him over Forbes there were a few guys I, I personally wanted with this one I ain't even gonna, I'm gonna hold you I wanted with this one Deontay Banks it's a quote that I read on Twitter him saying he's not he doesn't even know who's on our offense now this is a guy who spent time in Maryland and Jahan Donson went to Penn State. Penn State and Maryland kind of got like a rivalry over the last few years or whatever. So you're telling me at no point in time this man didn't look at the roster, look at film and, and see that Jahan Donson who faced Maryland, who last year had like an 11 catch game over 200, and yard, 200 yards. Now I posted this on my um, personal page on Facebook and I guess some, and I, and I had added I had to add some flavor to it. I was like, oh, this is why you bitter because Jahan put up this number on your team. Somebody was like, oh, well, he didn't play. I was like, oh, well, 
even if he didn't play, regardless, the whole point of the, the fact of the matter is this. He said he doesn't know anybody in the offense. That's 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 baloney. That's bullshit. Come on, bro. We like that's what the whole case point of the case was. Case in point. But he does know who Jahan Dawson is. And come on, everybody knows who Terry McLaurin is. You haven't even established yourself in the rank to even talk like that. You know, you can't you can't even talk and say you don't know who Terry McLaurin is. Like, is he the biggest household name in the league? Nah, nah, he may not be. But Darius Slay know who he is, know who he is. Bradbury knows who he is. They're very familiar with him. He he always gives Darius Slay a game. He gave Bradbury some work. And Terry McLaurin is a Giants killer. And I guess in all the matchups, something I read earlier, about 50 reception and 680 yards, I believe, or something like that. Um, 13 yards per catch. He is a giant slayer. He puts up some of his best game against the Giants. I wish he would kind of have these performances more against the Cowboys, but we'll get to that in another video. But he, he plays well against the Eagles and predominantly the Giants in these, these games. But we got to come out. We, we can't take these guys for granted. Tyrod, like I said, Tyrod Taylor looked way more confident than Daniel Jones had. This team cannot score. Like, I don't think they said this team has scored in. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know the total amount of points, but I just know that <laughs> they've allowed more points than they've scored. We already know that, and they've had a sack issue with Daniel Jones. I don't know how that's going to be tomorrow, but they have issues on their line, as they have injuries on their line as well. So. This might be a game where the line can, can gain some confidence. I think this game, we have to take it serious. We can't just look at it as like it's a win. Like, it's like, no, like every possession counts. You cannot, we can't be going out and just leaving points on the field. I'm tired of that, especially against the Giants. This team isn't ta as talented as us. I know like the coaching is still in question with certain things. Jack Del Rio, man, please dial up a blitz early and often. Do not wait to this team has gained some momentum and some traction because we already know based upon how Jack Del Rio and his, his laziness and his incompetence to adapt to the modern game, how he's liable to give up a touchdown. He wants these guys to play within the scheme. No, play to the team's strength. Put Cameron Carroll close to the line. You know what I'm saying? Try to play more man, more physical. Ben St. Juice is more of a physical corner. And we're not facing like, a, you know, an A.J. Brown or a C.D. Lamb or a Cooper Cup or anything like that this week. But still, you we have to take all of this serious. I don't know where Emmanuel Forbes is going to be in this equation of this week, but I really want our lick back. I want our lick back from for when we tied. We were up 10 points in that game. We should have won that game. Jahan Dawson had like a catch to send it help send us in the overtime and, and Terry he, he balled out as well He had over 100 yards in the arm. Um, I was about to say the Meadowlands up in MetLife So we need that energy Going up into MetLife. This is business. It's like this. This is business We can't just see this as an easy win because I don't see this as an easy win I know everybody's saying the Giants suck, but our offense has been up and down. We haven't run the ball and as I said earlier on Twitter or X, whatever y'all like to call it now. I think we should really run our offense far as the run game, similar to, excuse me, how they do in Atlanta, or like Arthur Smith does in Atlanta, and um, Kyle Shanahan does in San Francisco, where we at least try to implement some tight end or, or fullback into the run game, or to the short pass game, to cut down on these sacks that Sam Howe is taking. A lot of them is on him I, you know you try to give him the benefit of the doubt i read something in the comment section earlier about he's waiting for these guys to get open it's a zone coverage sack i mean sack is a sack to me you know i don't get all into the, the nuance in that but i appreciate the context as usual but you gotta give up the ball because we don't want to be passing and drop it back early in these early in the first two downs then he gets sacked take like a six seven yard down now it's like third and 17 like i mean i know he's he's made some some good throws on like third and 17 but it's all about field position and eating up clock tomorrow like it's, it's all about that we have to we have to like we have to put them away man i'm tired of us dragging games up because we were up two scores in atlanta and the the, the score one point of the game last week was 24 to 10. I'm thinking like, yes, yes, we get the ball back. We're going to score again. 
you know, they probably get the ball back with Stoffel and we can probably get another touchdown or field goal. Put the game away. Put the game out of reach. This is one thing that I wish EB would do. Like, it, the offense is looking a little bit better than it was with Scott Turner. Of course it did, like, but I expect more and I expect more consistent play. I want to see Terry get a lot of targets this week. Um, I want to see Jahan get acclimated into the offense a little bit more. Want to see some tight ends being used, tight ends in motion. Let's not have a stale offense come out there. Let's let's try some new things. Let this be the week we get over the hump. We have to win this because we face Philly next week, and then it's, that's to me is another must-win game. We have to. We can't beat the Giants. We we can't even talk about playoffs because we'll face Philly next week, and it's just a dark cloud over us the whole week. People are, oh, you lost to the Giants. Now you're gonna face the Eagles. The Eagles aren't as good as they were were last year. I can't sleep on any team in this league. But I'll give y'all a score prediction if I have to, because it's going to be an old school NFC East game. I'm thinking like some some weird score, probably 22 to 19 or 22 to 17. I think we can pull this off. I just want wish and hope for the best. So till next time, hail to the Washington Commanders. My score prediction is 22-17. Until next time, peace, love, and blessings. <laughs>